one ambulance. Rigged with cameras for the first time ever. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. Body mounted cameras record everything. Oh, it's going to be another two hour session of wearing the man bra. Hello, you okay? Lord turned up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> Apparently, it's going to be a fish oil lens on us and it'll make your face look even fatter than it is. <laughs> Where's the button, Jamie? It's there. We'll reveal what it's really like. So, where are you hurting? To be a paramedic. Hello there, Lawrence. Do you know what? <laughs> High five, yeah, well done, love. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. We get life, we get death. We have a bit of everything. As they deal with 3,000 emergency calls each day. We're not in the Bronx. Yes! I think it's red one, let's go. Blue light. <laughs> Taking you right to the heart of the action. You come to that? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the worst bit over. All right. Budgies in the back of the in the boot of the car. Well, where else are you going to put them? They're in a cage. Yeah. But... Maybe he's going on holiday and he wants someone to look after him. Surely that's not safe. Not safe. <laughs> or if he falls off his perch. Well, I'm sure he can fly. Rest once. I've not been in the service long, and I've got my phone in my front pocket, and I'd had I'd had iTunes on in the car, and I'd not locked it. Oh no! And as I was doing compressions, I must have just pressed, caught my phone, and I was doing compressions in time with I'm all about the bass. You could see the family looking around as if say, "Where is that music coming from?" But I didn't want to stop my compressions to turn it off, so I just had to carry on. <laughs> How else are you going to transport budgies? Hey, would you get them home from the shop? Maybe you just bought them. Hold on, what are these pigeons doing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they only had pigeon on the bonnet. <laughs> Suicidal pigeons. Red one, two pigeons now. <laughs> if birds can balance on telegraph wires and blooming pylons, I'm sure they can manage in the back of a BMW. It just doesn't seem right. When crews are on shift and waiting for an emergency call, they often park at the fire station. It's close to town, so they're in a good location to respond to calls quickly. I've got a red two, please, for a clear surgery. Yeah, I'll receive. Just going to put my bar for you. Dan Edwards and Shane Jones are racing to a GP's surgery, where a doctor has requested an emergency ambulance for a patient. Let's have a look. 61 year old. That's it, sepsis. Sepsis, or blood poisoning, is a potentially life threatening condition. Without quick treatment, it can lead to multiple organ failure. So Dan puts his foot down. I love these new sirens. <laughs> oh no! I wonder if it's coming around the corner. Oh, suck at him. There we go. <laughs> it's just five minutes since the call came in. Shane goes to get a briefing from the GP who called 999. Well, then you're right up this ramp. And Dan gets the patient straight inside the ambulance. So what's going on then, Dave? What could I chicken again? So the fried. That's what started it. Has it? Last Saturday. I ain't been right since. Hot flushes and now sleep, throwing up, shaking. Well, the doctor's put you down as having a nice temperature, so... There we go. Nice little chat with the doctor. Been unwell recently. Bit of a stomach bug, yeah. have you? You think it was something you've eaten? Yes, I do. 
Okay, how do you feel today? When I get up, I get giddy. It's shaky. How long's that been going on? Since Saturday. David is a retired roofer, and although he's been ill for six days, he doesn't like to bother his GP. Come on, have a sit on this bed. Your heart's a bit quick, so I'd rather you be lying down. Let's see. It's knackering you out, isn't it? I'm gonna put some stickers on your chest, all right? Yeah. Just because your heart's going a bit quick, I'd rather just get an ECG done, just to make sure there's nothing there. Do you want to untuck? David has a heart rate of 160. A normal rate is between 60 and 100. He's also struggling with a bad cough. Have you got any breathing conditions normally? COPD, emphysema? Yeah. No, no, no. 39 At 39.2, David's also running a temperature. All these readings can point to sepsis. Dave's typical of the generation who, no matter how hard it gets, it can always get worse, so they, they often put off calling us until it's really severe. He may have looked OK, but he was acutely unwell inside, so he was in a life-threatening condition at, at that point. Is this skin colour normal for you, like a tinge? Worse. You got, like... Is that, is that mo a bit mottled, isn't yeah. it? Right, just lie nice and still for me, all right? Mottled skin is another of the symptoms for sepsis, and David's oxygen levels are still low. Sats have levelled out to 94. It's sepsis alert. You're quite unwell, to be fair. You've got a good infection going on, but your body's struggling to shift. I've got a 61-year-old male triggering sepsis, Resps of 32, pulse of 150, temp of 39.2. ETA is probably going to be about five minutes. What made your daughter decide for you to go to the doctors? Was she just worried, or was it the fact that he hadn't shifted? She's worried. Well, you know what you're going to get now, don't you? Yeah. I told you so. Okay. Yeah. But he wasn't expecting all this, was she? I bet he was just expecting a simple walk into the surgery. You told you, my, you told your daughter's worrying, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> a specialist team is standing by in A and E, ready to treat David as soon as he arrives. Yeah, it was proper septic. Because his oxygen saturations are so low, his heart's working twice as hard to compensate. Yeah, so I wonder if you've got the start of a chest infection coming in with that car, it's knocked his immune system, hasn't it? Just took it by surprise, and it's just... I suppose it only takes one, one drop in your immune system for it to trigger into that big, gigantic inflammatory response, which is sepsis. Afternoon. Paramedic Gaz Clark and trainee Mike Arrowsmith started at 7 o'clock this morning. They did the same shift yesterday. Then Gaz went home and had a curry. He brought it down. Yeah. The bar has been loaded. Sweet then. Open your window. I think a uh, relationships with crewmates uh, is probably one of the most vital things of the job, really. You can go to a a heartthrob job, and you, you need someone to talk to. You get through the day using humour, really, don't we? Yeah. And when you can get one over on your mate, no one's about. There's no <laughs> patience there at all, and that it's it's useful. <laughs> it's E for urgent. RSA Academy, Bilston Road, Tipton. Fifteen-year-old patient has query fractured collarbone. Whilst playing football. Nine 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 mode activated. They arrive at the school 12 minutes after receiving the call. The teenager has made it off the football field and into the building. One of his teachers is with him. What's your name, mate? 
Kieran and Mike, this is Gaz. What's happening hey. today? I was playing football. Then I was on one on one with a goal. And then I was such so and then I got knocked over and I just landed on my shoulder. How did you get from the field to here? Did you walk yourself? Yeah. And can you feel your fingers and everything? Yeah. Can you move your fingers on? Oh, yeah. You feel me touching you there? If Kieran experiences numbness or pins and needles, it could mean he has nerve damage. So we'll take this off. How attached are you to this top? If it's causing too much pain, we'll cut it off. Cut it off. All right. Until he sees it, Mike won't know how severe the injury is. The bone may have broken through the skin. So you landed on this shoulder? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't have your arm extended out at all? No. Was it land that way or was it more towards the far front to back? Like I landed like I was running and I just landed like on my left shoulder straight up. Oh. Oh, right. While the collarbone hasn't broken well, Kieran's skin, it's well out of place. He may need surgery to realign it. Let me get you some of this. If you have to score the pain out of ten, ten being the worst pain on earth, one being slight. What number would you put on it now? Nine. Nine? Is it a ten on movement? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Could be dislocated, but then again, it could be fractured. Yeah, <laughs> we wouldn't like to say about an x-ray. Right, mate, review good hand. This is gas and air. Have you ever had it before? No. Nice deep breaths. It's a laugh. pain relief. It'll make you laugh. Make you feel quite, quite giddy. It only works whilst you're breathing in. <laughs> That's that noise we want to hear. Nice deep breaths every time. Yeah. And then we'll get that pain score down yeah, to a zero. It's going to be a trip to hospital, all right. <laughs> Gas and air is normally used as a muscle relaxant, and you relax the tension, so it eases the pain. I think Kieran enjoyed the laughing gas, and he? The young people tend to, uh, tend to be giggling off it and laughing and funny, where the elderly just tend to be more sort of uh, zoned out. Being 17, you're not legally allowed to drink, so you never do. But that's about having about 8 to 10 points. Okay. Eight to ten. Yeah. It's like having one pint for me. <laughs> I know, but you're like waiting, yeah. Is that working? <laughs> what number would you put on it now? A four. A four now. So it's looking down. Yeah. Excellent. Guys, you're in the army. You can do triangular back. Yeah, I'm putting a leg in a sling. I just don't want it on that shoulder. Keep sucking on that, guess, isn't it? Keep sucking on it. Keep sucking. Keep sucking. <laughs> Oh, yeah, blame me. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the A team here today. <laughs> Slings? Uh, it's not really my forte, I don't think. I used to be really good at them, but it's, uh, I'd say it's a lack of practice, really, doing a sling. While the gas and air is working, Kieran's still in substantial pain. We can pop a little needle in your arm and give you some more pain relief. Would you be happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be driving around and we're going to be going over potholes and bumps in the road, so we're just getting pain free. Right, I'm going to give you some good drugs now. Okay, you might feel a bit warm and a bit lightheaded. Are you right-handed? Still be able to do your work. Excellent. After half an hour of pain relief, Kieran informs them he can't feel anything. Time to get him to hospital, where Gaz will need to give a full report to A and E staff. I'm a, I'm a, no, I don't anything to my shoulder. Yeah. And then this girl I saw, I said, I went, I've looked at this, I've done anything to you. She goes, Phew. I went, oh no. <laughs> Sometimes your body protects yourself by numbing pain first. Then afterwards, it slowly starts to come back. Yeah. And that then goes, how oh, this hurts. Yeah. At the end of the day, you broke a bone. It's going to hurt a bit, isn't it? You're still floating. Good stuff, that morphine, <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> well, my mum probably be moaning that I've got to stay off school. They normally suggest at least the, uh, the first day and that, you know, have a bit of time off. Just to get used to having the, the partial back slab on and also not disturbing how they've set it. Kieran's collarbone will be x-rayed before it's manipulated back into position. If the bones still don't line up properly, doctors may decide to operate and fix the break with a plate and screws.
stab him when I was a trainee te technician. And this guy who was in a gang, another guy from a gang, come up behind him and just whoosh, slid out. Missed his carotid artery and, and everything. Yeah. But his throat was open. You could see on his trachea in the middle a knife mark had gone across his cartilage. How he was still alive, I don't know, but it, it, it missed all his vitals. So we put a, stuck a, because we were only around the corner from the cross, we stuck a big bandage on it. Made him do this to like self close the wound. The blood and guts ones never bother me. Like if someone said to me, what's the, what's the worst job you've been to in terms of emotional? It would be holding the hand of an old lady who got cancer until she died. Mm. Family couldn't get there in time, so. I said to I said to control on I'm, I'm gonna stay with her. So she's at least got someone. That was that bit of it for me. Stabbing. Stabbing. Nine nine nine, but That's us talking about stabbings, that is. <laughs> See now I get that buzz. Now this is where I get the adrenaline rush now. Nice. Four three six two. Four three six two, just thank you. Uh, initially, uh, Paula said that he had been hit by a car, and then now he's been stabbed in the face. So we're not really sure what uh, uh, And the adrenaline disappears. I'll tell you what we'll do. I mean, we'll head towards the scene, but if we get any suspicion, we'll just drive past and update you if you're happy with that. Received. Yeah, that's fine by me. Same with you. Please keep driving. That's all we need, uh, doors are locked. On we go. Heavy foot. Thanks, Emma. It's a very loose term, isn't it? Stabbing. I was stabbed with a paper clip versus stabbed with a machete. Turn the sirens off now and the lights, and we'll we'll just go and have a peek. Yeah, it could be kids playing around, couldn't it? Could just be a mess around, yeah. Yeah, is this it? Yeah, go on. Go on, then we'll pull up here. The man is drunk and abusive. He's fallen off a bench and cut his eyebrow. He doesn't need any treatment, so Dan and Shane move on to their next job. So he was wasted. <laughs> we get that adrenaline rush, don't we? You get that, oh, this could be a, a proper job. It could be what I'm trying to do, and it could be like, whoa, what, what am I going into? It's the man on the bench. <laughs> Michelle have just dropped off a patient at the hospital, but their next emergency call has come in straight away. 91-year-old Ken. Query stroke after a head injury. Oof. What the what hell? The hell? <laughs> That's about as much off-road as that vehicle has probably ever done. Yeah. Hello, you OK? Hello, you are right? In the house, Michelle and Simon's body cameras will record everything. 91-year-old Ken has collapsed. He lives on his own. Hello, Ken. How are you doing? So what's happened? When I came, it was all a bit... Okay. I will, yeah, you know. Like confused yes. and stuff. Yeah, because yeah, he has got dementia. Right, so okay. Yeah. Yesterday, Ken had a fall, and this morning his family found him in bed unwell. Like we picked him up. Yeah. Walked him through here, like the best we could. Yeah. Because he wanted the toilet. Okay. And then he sort of just went like that. And okay. My dad couldn't handle him, and I couldn't handle him. Yeah. So we just laid him down there where he is. Straight away, Simon does a basic test to see if Ken has had a stroke. Can you stick your tongue out? Please. That's it. Oh, he's smiling anyway. Oh. Has he been talking to you? Yeah. Yes and no, really. OK. Ken has two children, six grandchildren and six great-grandchildren. Keep your arms still, Ken. I was going to call you Grandad then. It's easy to call. Yeah. Has he been poorly or anything recently? Yeah, really yesterday. I mean, it's not been too bad. Ken? 
blood test on your finger, all right? Sharp scratch. Well done. 4.2. Okay. Probably do with a sugary tea or yeah. something. Oh, yeah. He had a history of urine infections, so we were wondering whether the fall was from that because urine infections can cause you to become confused, unsteady on your feet. Especially in the elderly. Especially in the elderly. All right, Ken. Hello. I'm over here. We're going to sit you up, okay? Right, if we can do. Yeah, we will do. If you can do, that's. <laughs> All right, young man. Bend in the middle. Oh. 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 Where's it hurting, Ken? Ken, where's that hurting? Where's your pain? Back to his neck. Back to your neck. Your neck. Here? Here? Yeah. There. Is it there? Yeah. Ken, can you lift your head? Lift your head, put your chin to your chest. And your whole head. Move forward like that. No. No. OK. Could have been caused by some sort of spinal damage. We had to prepare for the worst in that situation. Simon and Michelle have requested a second crew to help immobilise him before taking him to hospital. All right, Ken, what we're going to do is we're going to pop a collar around your neck to yeah. keep your neck nice and still. Yeah. Then we're going to put a board underneath you so we can get you down the stairs and then off to the hospital to see the doctor. Yeah. Sorry for stepping over you. <laughs> That's a lovely smile. It's going to be uncomfortable. Hands in, don't move. OK, we're going to lift you up. All right, Ken? Ready, ready, oh, steady. Lift. Do it. Got it. Keep your arms in, Ken. Up the hill, Grandad. Ken's had a few falls recently, but has never had to go to hospital. It's OK. Give us your hand. Give me your hand, Grandad. Ken. I'll stop calling you Grandad soon, I promise. OK, Ken? Oh, that's my face. Ken's daughter, Jane, is coming with him to hospital. Is he OK, though? Like, Obs are OK, it's just he's a bit... He's a bit slow with his responses. Um, could be just dementia. Definitely needs to go to hospital for observation. All right, there. He's complaining Ken. of pain at the back of his yeah. neck as well, so that's obviously concerning us. I think the falls might be related to an infection as well, because his temperature's slightly elevated. 62, are you receiving? Yes, go ahead, Ivan. Yeah, just giving you an update. We've extracted patient onto the ambulance. I think we're going to give him some pain relief before we take off the hospital received. OK, Ken, I'm going to pop this tight thing on your arm, OK? How long was he married? Sixty-five years, he would have been married. Oh, how long has she passed away for? Uh, nearly five years, and they'd just been married sixty years. Okay. And, uh, they was having a big do, and she passed away. And has he coped all right since? Well, we never thought he'd got get this far. Five years, because he's so missed out, obviously. But... He's done well. Yeah. He's had a lot of problems and stuff, but he's survived every time. Yeah. Hold my hand, Ken. Hold my hand. All right, Ken. We're going to the hospital. OK. Where are we going? <laughs> hospital. You seem a bit more confused to you than normal, does he? Or... Yeah, yeah. It can be quite bad at times with confusion, but on the whole, yeah. he manages OK. I've not heard him talk that bad before. He likes your arms. <laughs> few bumps, Ken. Grandad Ken. That's the hardest thing I find about dementia patients is you never really know what hurts, how much it hurts. Yeah. He was very calm in the house. But obviously the second we put him on the board and got him downstairs, yeah. he kind of became a bit agitated, agitated but that was quite yeah. natural. I think we did the best thing for him. Oh, I hope. 
pint ding in the baby. Oh, Daisy, so that doesn't bother me. Well, they, they can't talk to you, can they? Well, no, I know they can't talk to you, but at least you can tell whether they're in genuine pain or not. They're not going to say that a pain is a 7 out of 10. No, no, true. You can tell when the kid's in pain. It, it's hard when you can't assess them either. You don't know where the pain is or... Yeah. I was just ignoring genuine stuff. I think blokes tend to try and ignore it more than women. Yeah, I think women get sicker and men die quicker. Yes. Yeah. And then we blokes, oh, I'll manage, yeah. I'll cope, I'll not pass it away. Yeah, yeah. And women are willing to accept the help more. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'd rather deal with an old person than a baby. Yeah. 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 Some ways they're very similar. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Similar. <laughs> they both need looking after a lot more. Midnight, and Dan Smith and Jamie Cashmore have another hour to go till their shift is over. I love my heat time. Uh, Depends. I've had, I've had, I've had some really bad ones. I've had right? some really bad ones. I remember I went to a club in Manchester and they had them on tap. Oh. And they were disgusting. I bought um, a mojito in a bottle. Yeah. And it was like drinking Listerine. It was vile. <laughs> Their next call comes through. A 37-year-old man with an ankle injury. He's injured his ankle, it is painful and swollen. Just sort of walking home from the pub time, isn't it? I was just thinking, at this time of night, how do you do something like that? And that's, he's just stumbled off the curb or something, really. But, it's going to be really silly, isn't it? But why is he walking at this time of night? Mm. They arrive at the scene 14 minutes after receiving the call. Hello. How you doing, mate? You all right? Is it Mark, is it? All right, Mark. What's happened tonight, mate? Hmm. Yeah. Is it like kind of a weak ankle kind of thing? Got more and more painful. More and more painful, and guess it's not normally that swollen then. Can I just have a look? Yeah. Where's most of the pain? Just, just, right the top of the just round there, is it? Right. I'll just take your sock off, is that yeah. all right? Yeah. What's that from? It's only come up in the last couple of weeks. Oh. Any pain around here? Ow. Sorry. Yeah. Any pain around here? Yeah. And how about right on the base of your foot? Mm. No? OK, OK. Right, mate. Nice. We'll get you onto the bed, get you onto the ambulance. And... Mark and Kevin had been travelling home from a job in London when Mark couldn't walk any further. He had quite a significant ulcer um, on his foot and around the, the side of his ankle. The ulcers could have made his, you know, his foot that little bit weaker, so he may have sustained an injury on top of the ulcer. Right, let's, now we're in the light a little bit. Let's have a good look at this. So, just turn your foot over. So, how long have you had that? About three weeks. About three weeks. Have you ever injured your foot? Sometimes I get problems with swelling on it. I've been on my feet too long, and all the hours I've been doing it with. Mm. I've been doing stupid hours. What do you do? I'm going to fit them. You got any pain down in your toes? Yeah, a Yeah. Do you use any drugs or anything? Yeah. What do you use? Heroin. Heroin. Inject or smoke? I used to inject or smoke. OK. Where did you used to Pence. inject? Where did you used to inject? In your groin? Stopped that about five years ago. Have you had any, any problems with really bad circulation in your legs or anything? I've got... Another leg ulcer there. You've got a leg ulcer there. Leg ulcers are a side effect of intravenous drug use. They're often open and painful and can take several weeks to heal. They can also lead to swollen, aching ankles. So you're walking along and all of a sudden, bang, you had the pain. Yeah. What's probably not helping is there is an obvious ulcer in that foot and whether yeah. that's got infected and that's going to be causing the issue. And obviously, yeah. 
if the circulation isn't great, it's not going to heal. So you've had that about three weeks. That one? Yeah. yeah. And how about this one on the side? Three about three months. Is that better than that it was? That one comes and goes, eh, that one? Oh, right, right, OK. Get it x-rayed anyway at the hospital and then see how we go from there. If an ulcer becomes infected, it can develop into an abscess or gangrene. It can require amputation of part of the foot or toes. How long have you done this job for? Uh, nearly nine years. Do you like it? Best job in the world. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Yeah. What's the worst thing you've seen? Sorry, I. One of the worst things I've seen where I felt physically sick was a guy that had um, gone under a train. Oh, I'm joking. A couple of hours later, when we were cleaning the train, they went, oh, hold on, there's a bit of blood here. Sounds like a cheery story to get halfway to. I know, yeah. It didn't seem to take too long. Home time, though, innit? <laughs> Once they've handed Mark over to A&E staff, it's 1.30 in the morning, half an hour after their shift was due to end. Right, yeah, home time. Home time. Home time. I'm tired now. I know. I'm ready for bed. Ready for bed, done in. Those were an interesting pair, weren't they? Mm, and quite quickly, I was like, drug user. Mm. He's a drug user. He's got to be, there's no other reason why he'd have an ulcerated foot. To be honest, he was he was open with it as soon as he yeah. ever used drugs. He was, he was quite open with it. Which is nice, because a lot of people try to hide it, which makes it so much harder to... Yeah. ..to sort of assess them properly. I think as well, like, they seem nice enough. Probably just made a few crappy decisions in life, haven't they? Yeah. That's, that's sort of how they've ended up where they have. This is the first properly nice day of the year. It's supposed to be up to sort of nearly 20 degrees the weekend, so I heard on the, the weather. Yeah, I've heard that. Admittedly, I heard it from a man in the shop who was telling the counter assistants, but... <laughs> Very colourful jumper. Jumper in this weather. I oh, know. That's it, sun's out, tops down. Yeah. Sun's out, tops off. <laughs> Since Michelle joined the ambulance service a year ago as a technician, she's done most of her shifts with Simon. <laughs> See, I'm lucky because obviously you're so chatty. And you want to be lucky to have you, mate. Oh, look at it. Let me get the vom bowl out. Oh, no. <laughs> I feel bad for spreading all them bad rumours about you now. <laughs> <laughs> she picks her nose in the car for yeah, like. Wipes it on the steering yeah. wheel, you know, the usual. <laughs> she farted in front of a patient or something. Yeah. Yeah, they're a bit rubbish. You need you need to find some good rumours. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're rumours. 999 mode activated. Right. It's case E1134. Oh, Oh, sorry! <laughs> so sorry. Such an idiot. Yeah. 6-2, <laughs> uh, I've accidentally pushed that scene. Can you send us a job again, over? Oh, 6-2. No problem, lovely. I'll take the arrived scene, time out, and resend details. I'll take number 11 over. Thank you, you're a gem. Very welcome, Metro A. I'm sorry, Mark. 
They've been called to a 71-year-old woman who has cancer. Hey, Valerie. She's complaining of abdominal flank pain, and she is a CA patient. Apparently, she's been vomiting fecal matter. Waiting for them are twin sisters Valerie and Pam. Is it you we're here to see? Yeah. What can I call you? Val. Val, my name's Simon and this is Shell. I'm Michelle, you okay? Yeah. How are you feeling? Val was diagnosed with cancer three years ago. Where are your cancers? Here. Was wound cancer, but now it's gone to the okay. barrel. How often are you vomiting? I have just not long gone. And your bowel motions? None at all. Zero. Just ain't working. I think it's blocked again. And that's why they said I've got to go in to get that tube put down my nose. OK. Right. Val? Val's tumour has got so advanced that she's already had to have the unblocking procedure four times. Are they planning on doing anything else? No, no, I'm OK, Val. No, I'm OK. It's just a matter of time now. OK, what's your okay. prognosis? As in, have you got a time frame? Uh, four to six he's not months. coming with us. No, no, he's coming back OK. Up. Obviously, I'm sorry to hear yeah, that from yeah. you. Um, it would be best anything I can do to make you feel more comfortable. Thank you. Obviously, Obviously yeah. knowing that someone is going to pass away very soon and knowing that I've got plans past that point in my life, I, I don't know how what... Humbles you a lot. It does, yeah. It really tugs on your heartstrings a little bit. Well, so you've had no pain relief. No. You're a soldier, aren't you? I'm not. <laughs> uh, what, what sort of pain is it? How would you? Oh, how, would you, how would you describe it? Real bad pain. Val lives by herself, but she and Pam speak at least four times a day. She was telling us about a 70th birthday party that they'd had together, and the bond between her and her sister was just... It was immense, wasn't it? Very, very strong. What did you do for your birthday, then? We, we had, had a big party. party the, yeah. the road. I mean, it was night It was brilliant. Was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Fernando said, I'll get you there for your 70s. If you oh, yeah. did, don't you well. But today, Val is going to need to go to hospital. How are you on your feet? All right. Do you need a hand at all? No, I'm all right, thank you. Make yourself as comfortable as you can. Pop your seatbelt on the floor to get. Oh. You're both very smartly dressed as well. You always are. So the pain is 10 out of 10. It can't be more than 10, all right? 22. I've got OCD and it can't be more than 10, all right? <laughs> all right, let's have a little look at you. Have a listen. Yeah, I do think you've got a blockage. So. I can't hear anything yeah. there. Everywhere else is, is active. Pam's been with Val throughout her treatment. They've never spent a day apart. Sharp scratch. I've heard this before. I've got you. Good. You never have. Yes. Nice. Told you he's good. Excellent. Be honest, is that the best candy you've had in Wonderful. today? Yeah, I thought so. What excellent. Shall we have a bit of air con, shall mm. we? A bit warm. All right. So, like I said, it's just normal paracetamol going straight into your vein, which makes it a bit more effective. So... What's it like growing up as twins, then? We're very close. You know, we could go down the town, buy a card, and it's exactly the same. And we're not with each other. Aww. Isn't it, yeah. So close. Pam and Val have two other sisters. Pam is the only one who's not had cancer. As all the strongest will people are now, what you've gone through in your Val. Nothing else you can do, is there? Just got to go on with it. Exactly, you ain't got much choice, have you? Yeah. No. good now, I mean, is it? No. You're feeling sorry for yourself. It's three years you've had this. Have you got plans yeah, to do? Yes, What's your plans? We're going to the seaside. Which one? Uh, we're going to the Western. Western. Oh, a bit of a drive. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? And then we want to go to Birmingham on a good shop, because we ain't had a good shop for years. Anything else? 
It's like a pyramid, and then I should put that Val's ashes. And then when I go, I'll have my ashes in because Val always said, We came in the world together, we go out in the world together. That's nice. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> But not yet, Val. Not yet. No, because you've got to have your new three piece suite. <laughs> oh, you're going to have whatever you want, Flower. Yes. Okay. Is that pain reduced at all? Did you? Uh, what That's number? It. Was a ten? Eight. Eight. I'll give it a few more minutes, but I can give you some more bean into your vein if you fancy it. I'll have the more food. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Couldn't do that at all. Should we have a go? Let's say whiskey lima 4362. Whiskey lima 4362. Whiskey lima 4362 at Walsall Manor Hospital. Received. Have you enjoyed your stay? We have. Could you think of anywhere better to be right no. now? No. Exactly. A few bumps, Val. Brace yourself. Such a lovely lady. Such a, a sad thing to see, really. I always find it hard when you're leaving someone like that. When you know what's going to happen. Because whenever I leave a patient, I always say, OK, see you later, um, you know, take care, you know, and stuff, and hope, hope you get sorted. But what do you say to somebody who's going through that, who knows that they haven't got long left? You just don't know what to say. It doesn't matter how strong you are or how you look in the job. Jobs do affect you and do make you emotional. David turned out not to have sepsis or food poisoning. He was instead diagnosed with pneumonia. He spent 10 days in hospital on intravenous antibiotics. He's now made a full recovery. An X-ray showed Kieran's collarbone was indeed broken. Doctors left it to move back into position itself as the swelling went down. Kieran is devastated he can't play football, but his recovery is going well. And Val was kept in hospital for three days with a tube down her throat to clear the blockage. She's been given a box of medication to manage the extreme pain when the end is near. She calls it her waiting for God box. Val and Pam have made their trip to the seaside at Western Supermare. They now want to visit Llandidno. <laughs> 